Hello and welcome to all our viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and MC here at Gold Learning. And with me here today is Billy Harrigan. Welcome, Billy. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Billy, it's so wonderful to have you here today uh, with us. You are a childbirth educator, a doula, a lactation counselor, and you have been doing this for many, many years. So tell us a little bit, where in the world are you? And tell us a little bit about your background and your journey. I live in Southern Ontario in Canada, and I've been working with birthing families for about 35 years now, uh, perhaps a little more. I'm the mother of seven children mm. and some pretty delicious grandchildren. <laughs> I'm completely unbiased. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, I'm the uh, founder and director of Birth Trauma Ontario. Mm -hmm. That's an agency that uh, provides education and advocacy for trauma-informed skills for clinicians and care providers. And it's also um, an agency that helps to connect uh, mothers who are uh, dealing with postpartum post-traumatic stress with help and peer support mm. and I serve my community primarily as a traditional birth companion so mm. I help those families that want to have um, family-centered home births mm -hmm. um, that does not include uh, regulated practitioners. I see wonderful so so would you describe yourself then as a birth companion is that like a doula or how would you describe it? Um, it's a traditional birth attendant, so okay. it's along along the the, uh, the vein of a traditional midwife. But oh. um, midwifery here in Ontario is a uh, regulated um, health discipline uh, practice. So mm -hmm. I do not practice midwifery without a license. So it's uh, right. it's a different right. kind of um, birth support that is more in line with traditional, traditional. Uh, midwifery. Yeah. Beautiful. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Birth trauma, such an important topic. And this is, you know, has become, you know, the center of your work there too. And it feels like to me, like we're learning more and more. It's, it's a complex topic, right? And, uh, and uh, even now when we speak to the older generations for, for decades, I mean, for a long, long time, that wasn't the topic that was talked about much. It was always been said, oh, you have a healthy baby. You made it out alive what are you there what are you complaining about what is so so many families and women were felt felt feeling guilty if if they had these traumatic feelings and and they had no outlet nobody to talk to and even now when we talk to the older generations all these stories are coming up from what they experienced as well mm -hmm. so 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 tell tell us a little bit how how you also how you came to the topic how that became a center of your work and uh, share a little bit about this um, well, my, my parents were born in the usual fashion, um, at home, uh, mm -hmm. with neighbors, uh, in Canada, midwifery was entirely illegal. So, mm. um, it was to promote the medical industry and physicians. Right. So for the most part, neighbors just came over when someone was having a baby. And if it looked like it might be a little bit complicated, then the family physician came. Mm -hmm. And that's how my parents were born. But when it came time for them to have their babies, it was uh, after World War II. And yeah. most mm -hmm. people were moving into hospitals. It was um, just the cultural thing to do. And uh it was assumed then that it was going to be uh, dangerous. Uh, it had never been viewed as dangerous prior to that, mm. but then that was just part of the shifting culture to consider childbirth dangerous. And um, they, they were quite okay with it. But at the same time, my parents' generation were um, sedated into unconsciousness mm. when they had their yeah. babies. So they didn't have memories of what was done to them they just woke up and were presented right. with a baby. Mm -hmm. um, but then after that, with the advent of the epidural, mothers were awake and they had complete recollection of what happened to them. And so things that were done to an unconscious patient were still perhaps somewhat being done to an awake patient. And they had full conscious cognition of what happened. Also, trauma has um, an epigenetic element to it. Mm. So women today are the result of several generations of um, obstetric trauma and institutionalized uh, birth care that uh, can be very disempowering. Mm -hmm. So I think we're seeing 
a far greater increase in the effects of traumatic experiences on today's women because of this epigenetic heritage. Interesting, interesting, yeah, yeah. <sighs> As practitioners, uh, you know, becoming aware and being aware of, of of this issue, you know, and I would say I speak for many healthcare providers who are want the best for their families and want to learn mm -hmm. what they can do to prevent trauma from happening. What what can we as healthcare providers contribute? What can we do uh, to give the best possible, you know, experience and outcome for families out there, right? And uh, and you've been training healthcare providers with that or helping healthcare providers mm -hmm. learning yeah. about that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I did create the world's first accredited certification course for becoming a trauma-informed perinatal professional. Um, the course, how courses are delivered in the world uh, has changed lately because mm -hmm. of pandemic measures. So right. that will have to be retooled <laughs> <laughs> so it can be represented in a more accessible format now. But uh, trauma-informed skills is, in my opinion, um, mm -hmm. as life-saving as knowing CPR or neonatal mm -hmm. resuscitation. Um, the leading, one of the leading causes of death, in some places it is the leading cause of postpartum death and in others it's a leading cause, but in almost all areas of um, industrialized nations, suicide is yeah. the leading cause of postpartum death and mm -hmm. that is highly correlated to trauma. So learning trauma-informed skills is uh, probably as life-saving as knowing CPR. That, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and it's, it's a skill set. It's just a skill set. Um, it's, you know, as easily learned as CPR and it needs to be right. practiced. But there is a great deal of resistance to learning and adapting and adopting trauma-informed skills because it is counter-cultural to mm. how birth uh, the birth culture unfolds and the medical establishment delivers care and relates to one another. So mm. trauma-informed skills includes changing how um, the hierarchical model and uh, entrenched hazing and that kind of thing so that it does impact the delivery of care and it impacts the culture of birth. And so there's resistance to learning mm -hmm. it and changing. Do you see that the resistance now that we're talking about this topic more is becoming less or do you see it growing, the resistance? It could go either way, right? It could be that people become more familiar with the topic, are excited about it, want to learn, or it could go that some say, you know what, this is, you know, we, we've been always doing this, our way is successful, we don't, you know, enough of this already. What do you, is your experience with that? Uh, my personal experience is that there is greater resistance. Greater resistance, um, interesting. Greater mm. resistance, yeah. Um, mm. It challenges um, the uh, entrenched culture. It challenges how practitioners understand themselves. Um, mm -hmm. Their understanding is that they are delivering care that saves lives. And perhaps it does, but mm -hmm. long term, it doesn't. Long term, how maternity services are being delivered is not saving lives. It is creating uh, generations of an epigenetic imprint of trauma. Um, the mother who experiences trauma, then her child right. is at greater risk of mm -hmm. adverse childhood events. And we know the lifetime consequences of adverse childhood events means mm. lifetime health consequences. So how maternity care is being delivered yeah. is creating a fairly long-term generational negative consequence. And there is a considerable resistance to looking at that and considering yeah. that what's happening is not in everyone's best interest. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and um, here at Gold, we have created a lecture pack, and the lecture pack is create, uh, titled Preventing and Healing Perinatal Trauma, and that is for healthcare providers, doulas, lactation consultants, physicians, anybody out there who's working in the maternal health field. And you are speaking at this uh, for this lecture pack, and your presentation is titled Maternal Experience of Helplessness as a Precipitator for Traumatic Birth, Recognition and Strategies to Mitigate Helplessness and Avoid Trauma. Can you tell us a little bit, but without giving too much away, because, <laughs> but just a little bit, what what will you be presenting on? Well, fortunately, there is a tremendous amount of research and academic literature that has informed us what it is that contributes to and creates a traumatic experience, and be, and it is identifiable, it is qualifiable, which is magnificent because that means it is also uh, modifiable. 
So there's this is very good news. What we know is that a traumatic experience almost, not always, but the greatest predictor is interpersonal difficulties between the client and the practitioner. And the experience of helplessness, disempowerment and helplessness is the most foundational um, factor in a mother then perceiving her experience as traumatic and having the neurophysiological consequences of PTSD. So recognizing what creates a sense of helplessness in the client, what, uh, how she can behave to signal that she's experiencing helplessness, then informs the clinician that um, they, they can see what's happening, they know what causes it, and there are easily uh, implemented new or modified behaviors and vocabulary that can uh, turn things around quite quickly. Sounds wonderful. So we're actually getting some uh, information that we can take into our practice um, and use right there and then some really immediately. Uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> <to me. laughs> well, Billy, thank you so much for sitting down here with us. We are looking so much forward to the presentation. Thank you for chatting with me here today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. And for our viewers, if you would like to find out more about this presentation that will be available October 5th in the lecture pack, Preventing and Healing Perinatal Trauma, please go to our website at goldbirthandbeyond.com and goldlearning.com. Thank you everyone for participating here today. Bye-bye for now.